Patrick Willis, you directed this film. Very good to have you here with us. Um, I'm curious about the voice, actually, because it's one of the more, you know, it's like about the most interesting sort of element of the film that kind of really creates the, sort of the atmosphere that you're being told a story. How did you find the, um, the narrator? Uh, the narrator is uh, Robert Louis Abrahamson. I knew him from a show he does on 209 Radio, Evening Under Lamplight, on which he uh, reads uh, various stories and poems very beautifully, um, so he's an obvious choice uh, for the narrator. It took Angela Williams 45 minutes to find this parking space. That was after the childminder cancelled at the last minute, meaning she had to drive the children 15 miles to their grandparents. And the, the concept for the story, were you originally intending for it to be just uh, a single image with a story told over it? Or was there sort of, uh, did, it get, did it come from one concept and, uh, and then get refined down? I rather borrowed the concept from another filmmaker, Johan Kramer, who did a series called Eight Moments in Barcelona, uh, where he shot um, the eight cartridges of a uh, Super 8 film in different uh, uh, locations in the city, and then he uh, made up a story about the location, the people who happened to be there. And I just really liked the idea of um, you know, how uh, you're surrounded by people who are in living lives that you don't really know about and there's lots of hidden adventures and uh, interesting things going on with those people and I sort of like the idea of exploring that. How important was kind of coming up with the right location for you? Um, well, I, I wanted a castle next to a parking meter because it's sort of you get at the end where you know she's sort of out of state at times worried about sort of coming back and getting a, a parking ticket um, uh, so yeah it's just um, somewhere I could find a, a parked car which sort of remained there long enough uh, near me to start to get I could film it for long enough okay great thanks for that thanks very much um, do we have any questions from the audience have you seen any of Andy Warhol's movies no, I haven't actually. Uh, uh, thanks for the recommendation. Similar principle. So go and find some. They're probably on YouTube somewhere. That's all I'll say. I won't spoil it for you. Uh, are, are you aware of the, uh, of, of the tension that's generated by the fact that she puts her handbag on the roof? <laughs> Uh, why that bit specifically? Uh, because she's likely to drive off and leave it there, as lots of people do. I just find that I just found the the, the the tension from that bit was was still remains with me even now. Well, make a sequel or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I really wanted to see her come running back to the car. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that was certainly intentional. I wanted to tease the viewer by you know, having them imagine this person who never actually appeared in the film. How, how difficult was it to choreograph the action with, with the narration, which was presumably added later? <laughs> Um, <laughs> it wasn't that much uh, choreographing uh, needed, really. I just needed the, the car to be parked there for a few minutes so I could get enough footage. Does the owner of the car know you filmed it? No, no, so they wouldn't recognise it. So that's why the license plate <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I should say thank you very much. Thank you.